Hey guys, welcome to the final dungeon of Let's Play Star Ocean. Last time we arrived at the final dungeon, and in between last time and this time, I went and I did some uh, skill uh, attribution, put skill points in, whatever. Uh, mainly, I went and I maxed out. Uh, where are they there? Uh, well, I oh, I maxed out patience and perseverance almost for. Uh, my three characters that I'm actually using, other than Radix, of course. I also put in some additional points into things like Gale, uh, Writing, Kitchen, uh, Petri for some people. Uh, what else did I put points into? Yeah, if you want to check out these guys, I've lowered them down to about 130 SP. Uh, they'll gain some more of that by the time they uh, match levels with my other characters. Uh, what else did I put points in yet? So, Perseverance up to level 10, Patience up to level 9, and that should max out your training at level 10. You can put an additional point into Patience for the, uh, you know, the extra skill points, or the uh, stat points, but that's about it. And I will, of course, do that eventually, but not now. Basically, I just wanted to get everyone as many stats as I could based on where they were at, and so I did that with those three. These four characters I haven't touched since last time, at least I don't think I have. Um, I will get to them eventually. I want to get everyone up to the same level and then, you know, muck around with different party ideas. Who knows uh, what I'll end up doing. But anyway, that's what I've done at this point. Now, this dungeon, it's not super confusing, but it's not easy to understand either. So let's, uh, let's go through here. Going down will lead you to an area that I will get to by taking a different path. So let's first go to the left here. And of course, let's go in the first door we find and find a treasure trove. Of course, this was one of the last rooms I went to the last time I played through this area because I forgot about it. Yeah, every time you see the first door in an area, you never think, well, geez, that can't possibly be, you know, a treasure room. That's probably the right way. I'm supposed to go past it, go find all this other stuff first. But Whatever. Anyway, we picked up some pretty good stuff here, so first of all, let's go to you. And we found a Star Cloak, which isn't bad at all. I'd actually think it would be better than the Mithril Mesh, because it's got some Evade on there as well, so I'm going to give that to you. Uh, what else did I pick up? I picked up a couple of unidentified things. Let's uh, go identify those right now. Let's see, oh, I've got some jewelry from random battles. Or maybe I got that from somewhere else. Let's identify that stuff too. A second fairy ring, that's not bad. A uh, gem, we got a piece of mithril, which I think you only ever use one in the game. A star ring, which is useless. I will show that off in a moment here. As long as I can identify the rest of this stuff. Jeez, that failed way too much. We get a star guard, which I don't really need. And we get the magical bikini for Prissy, which of course I don't have, so no, I don't think anyone else can equip that. You'd think that they would, you know, have done something like, oh, all females can use it, or something like they did in the Xeno series, uh, where everyone, or at least at the start, I think half the characters got swimsuits based on an FMV, and then in the next game, I think all of them got swimsuits. I think. I think it was an accessory and it didn't change your appearance in that game. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, fairy ring, we know what that does. Star ring does. Has effects of starry spells. Sorry about that. Little nephews are irritating, especially when they barge in and start tripping on headphone cords and threatening to rip them out of computer. Very, very, very irritating. Anyway. So yeah, that's all that does is uh, has starry spells, which I guess is what this element is. Starry elemental? I don't know, whatever. Anyway, not particularly useful. We did get a star guard. I believe the only one missing one right now is you, so you can have that. And let's move on. This dungeon probably going to take a little while. Let's start with the new enemies. Let's, uh, well, okay, I guess I can just attack them. That would be Explosion. Yeah, these guys, when they actually get their attacks in on you, are really powerful, those knights. They'll do about a thousand damage to Radix per hit, and of course, you know, they're throwing sword hits twice, so that's two thousand damage in one hit. 
and you usually can't block the uh, the backswing because you usually can't hit the enemy fast enough to you know stop him. Anyway, you think you know the big center path? This will probably lead forward, and no, it leads to a dead end room, which has absolutely no purpose in this game. I don't know why it's here. Anyway. Easiest way to kind of remember the process and how of going through this area is when you hit this, I guess it's technically the second stream, it's the first big main room that you come across. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start on the right, enter the first door, and then keep moving to the left. And then eventually we will cut down to a second layer and do a similar thing. So we start off with the right door there. Uh, those ones we'll get to after. First, we want to take this door. Leads to some treasure. Reflex! And a star cloak again. Nice. Let's go over. No, I didn't want to go to the back of it. Doomblade is for CS. Don't need that. Let's see. Reflex. Reflex is pretty much the ultimate, uh, or at least one of the ultimate armors in the game. Yeah, magical attacks will heal you. I'm not sure if this is all or some or what it is, but anyway, it's got better defense. It's got great absorption. Uh, it's got different elements than the Sylvan Mail, so there may be situations where you want it. I usually don't pay attention to elements at this stage of the game. It really, really isn't worthwhile. I try and use non-elemental attacks and use... Can you use the Starry Cloak? No, you cannot. And... You know, I don't really worry too much about the damage that I'm taking, so let's give him a Star Cloak. A couple pieces of Star Gear for you. And next room. This one leads to a couple of different areas. Now, if I recall correctly... Is this the one that I wanted to do now? I guess, I, yeah, I can do this one now. Okay. Whew. This one gives you Hermit Hat and Marvel Sword. Now the Hermit Hat, I don't recall who that goes to. Apparently you can use it. Uh, I guess it's technically better than the Dream Crown, except for the fact that it has no elemental protection. So I'm not a particularly big fan of it. I'd rather have you know, some generic elemental protection than a little extra evade, but that's just me. And since, of course, everyone's using the same... Oh, the Marvel Sword actually for Radix, and considering we were given this in a storyline event, so it's not like an item creation this, and it's better than this by a long shot, is kind of funny. The other thing that's kind of funny is uh, a sword which boasts an astonishing hit rate. Very astonishing. It's not anywhere near as good as the one that I already have. <laughs> Okay, sure, why not? This one gives me 40, the other one gives me 20. Anyway, that's just some crappy items, whatever. We head down here, and run into a battle, why not? Hit this guy before he manages to uh, hit me too much. Now, I was thinking about... Um, oh, what was it? I was thinking about bringing a party of nothing but mages to fight in some of the battles, but really that is going to make them look worse than they already are because they really don't work particularly well when you can't have someone to guard them. So that's why even if I'm not using my mages for healing, which has been pretty much the whole game, but even if say I was using Radix, or not Radix, Brunixus, ow, ow, there's a one shot, ow, hit the guy. Thank you, Millie. Even if I was using Ronixus in a battle, I would still want to have at least two, including Radix, two uh, fighters to kind of guard him so that he doesn't get interrupted while he's trying to charge for spells. Because that's really where, not necessarily all of where their uh, inability to deal a lot of damage later in the game lies, but it's definitely part of it, and it's really annoying when that happens to you. Now, heading this way will lead us back to the save point at the beginning of the game. It's the path that I uh, passed up. This one over here leads to the bottom of that room I was in. This was the door I just took. Now, that guy in uh, the black spinning eyeball there, he can be 
At least I think he can paralyze or petrify you. I'm not 100% sure if that individual one can, but... You will notice that we get a lot of experience. Yeah, this is the door I just went into, so I don't need to go back in there. Now we need to take this door, which just leads to some more generic treasure. Elven cap. Another reflex armor. And meteor swarm. I believe that is for... Uh, you, if I'm not mistaken. Meteor Swarm, non-elemental. I would say that's probably one of his better techs, because non-elemental, lots of MP cost, probably quite good. Eh, we'll, we'll try that out, I guess, uh, sometime in the future when I do eventually use him. Alright, let's see. I don't think any of my current characters can use the Reflex. If anyone can, you can, no. So, let's just give that to uh, Fear there. I know that she can use it, and that's quite better than what she's got. Eventually, she'll make it back in my party. What else did I get? I got an Elven Cap. Now, I believe that goes here. And, of course, yeah, see, this is the best helmet in the game for the light armor wielders, Millie, um, Joshua, etc. I think even uh, Marvel can use it. And look, 25 defense. No elemental protection. This is why I got the Dream Crowns when I did, because it just makes no sense to have them wear nothing on their heads, other than maybe sometimes a frog, for the entirety of the game, because this is the final dungeon. There's a bonus dungeon after this, but this is the final dungeon. This is the last story dungeon, anyway. Anyway, so we pick up that, and of course I won't use it because it sucks. And there we go, I finally got petrified by this guy. So he does petrify you. Good. Not really that it's good, but it's good to know. And I'm petrified again, that's helpful. Okay, stop that. Yeah, that's very helpful. I'm petrified three times in the same battle, I really didn't do anything. That was fun. Let's, uh... Where did it go? Liquor bottle. I know where I... I know where my items are. Especially when you can't, you know, customize your organization. Not very well, anyway. Now that we've done every other area that we've been to already, we can finally head through this way, which is the right way to proceed with the area. I'm going to try and use a ranged attack to take down this guy so that he doesn't get a chance to petrify me again. There we go. Yeah, our new weapons are really starting to kind of pay off in this area. This area is quite difficult if you don't have all of, you know, at least some decent weapons. If you still have whatever you can buy, not particularly effective. Now this door is locked. Uh, do remember this area, because I will be uh, cutting back here later. Uh, but for now, we have to go up here, since it's the only other way to go. I know, I think this one just leads to some treasure. Yes, it does. A Sylvan Bow. A question mark guard. And another Syl... Someone explain this to me. I do not understand this. Ronixus cannot dual wield. He's the only bow wielder in the game. This is basically giving me money. It's better than what he has, but it's not great. I, I don't get it. I really don't. And the question mark item. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to end up running out of uh, spectacles at this rate. Especially when I identify things like the cat band, which is, again, I believe only equipable by a certain um, bikini-wielding character. Yeah, I don't think anyone else can use it. Maybe you can. No, not even you. Okay. So anyway, let's head down. Run into more fights against the same enemies, which will still hurt me. As long as they can get hits in. If they can't get hits in, they're not going to do a lot of damage. There we go. They can just sit back. And keep some more stamina going. And if we continue down through this part of the dungeon, it's pretty straightforward. Pretty much one door leads to another door, 
which leads to a battle, which leads to another door. There's not a whole lot of variety in this part of the dungeon, unfortunately. The biggest part is, you know, that first section and a later section where you basically get stuck in the same situation where there's a whole bunch of doors and you have to figure out which one to go into first, blah, blah, blah. Ah, there we learned Ray's Dead, which I think is level 48? No, 46, okay. Uh, where am I going? We finally learn the resurrection spell for uh, Millie there. She's the only one, as far as I know, who has it. She's also the only one with Fairy Heal and Fairy Light, making her pretty much and dispel, which makes her easily the most useful mage, even if she doesn't do any damage in the entire game. So yeah, um, definitely like to have that spell. It will allow her to revive people if, you know, you know Radix dies or something like that. And I don't have to go into my inventory now to use an item every time someone dies, which, of course, is nice. And I got petrified again. Woo! That was fun. Alright, let's finish off a few of these guys. A lot of the battles that I've shown off in here haven't been particularly challenging, though there have been some, especially when I was uh, running around here off-screen trying to familiarize myself with the dungeon, that uh, were actually quite difficult to uh, to get through without, you know, running into, you know, lots of damage here, lots of damage there. I don't think I have anyone else who can use the mithril. You? Or the reflex, sorry. Uh, no. No one else can use it. Okay. Uh, both Cius and Ashley, I believe, can use it, but of course I don't have them. Anyway, here we can flip a switch. What this does is it opens that door that I was talking about before, the uh, one that was locked. So that's going to do it for this episode of Let's Play Star Ocean. Next time I will meet you back there at that uh, now unlocked door, and we'll be able to head through there and continue through the rest of the dungeon. Anyway, that's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.